Hello, everyone. Um, so um, this presentation is all about uh, reaching the highest grades. Um, and for those students who are looking um, towards those top grades, grade seven, eight and nine, and it's to support your studies and your revision um, in order to help you achieve those. Um, and it's a, a very uh, generic uh, talk, not subject specific. It's about what you can do um, across all different subjects to help support your revision and your studies uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, so, um, to start off with then, um, I'm sure quite a few of you might feel a bit like this, like at the moment that uh, you think, right, I've got that aim of a nine, I've got that aim of an eight or a seven, how do I get there at the moment I'm on a five, I'm on a four, I'm on a six, what do I do to turn that into a seven, an eight or a nine? Um, so, what can you do? First of all, it's about um, knowing all the basics, okay, when are your exam days? Uh, the provisional dates have been uh, have been released for all all exams uh, for the end of the year, so you can have a look on your the different uh, sites, whether it be AQA or Edexcel, uh, for these for these exam dates, or ask your teachers; um, they will know them as well. Um, as well as preparing for your mock exams. Um, secondly, about using revision guides. Um, so obviously these are fantastic in supporting your revision, uh, not only for mocks and for actual exams, but throughout the year, uh, they're a useful resource to help uh, support your studies as you're learning new content um, in your lessons. And then before you make a revision timetable, um, you need to know your strengths. What are your strengths, therefore? What are your weaknesses, therefore? What do you need to focus on on your revision timetable? Okay. Um, and remembering that this revision timetable um, is something that should be fluid, that needs to change throughout the year as your strengths change, um, as you get close to certain exams, you might feel like I need more time on, on that uh, subject. Um, and remember to build in time as well for uh, relaxation and for exercise. Um, but there's no harm in making a revision timetable right now um, to support your learning throughout the rest of year 11 even if it's something that you think from now, I'm just gonna spend two hours a week doing revision across all my subjects. Um, obviously, as you step up um, past your marks through into January, um, you're probably gonna increase that amount of time um, to four, five, six, seven, eight hours a week. So three hours um, are of the kind of uh, qualities that are needed um, for uh, these students who are looking for these uh, highest grades. Thinking about resilience, learning to manage your distractions, thinking about your phone, television, uh, internet. So if you are using a computer or a tablet or any other device to revise, um, what can you do uh, to manage the distractions that naturally uh, come from those devices? Um, I would actually recommend that you don't use a phone or whichever devices that you use the most often to contact people uh, because that's obviously an easy distraction so to leave your phone in another room um, and again if you are using a computer or a tablet then make sure you have any other tabs open um, whilst you're trying to do your revision and about perseverance so this is not going to come easy to anyone um, achieving any of these grades uh, requires perseverance and it's great to start thinking about it now in terms of what you're going to do um, to give you that time. But don't get down heartened if you think, right, I haven't seen any progress in like two weeks, three weeks. OK, it's about thinking, right, review your goals again. What is it that you really need to focus on and go back to them and keep going and revising. And then again, go back, go back around and relook again at, at what it is that uh, your strengths are and your weaknesses are and what you need to revise. Uh, being resourceful. So obviously you use teachers uh, for suggestions. They were posting on the Google Classroom as well. Um, your peers um, and relatives to support and for uh, practice, for revision, um, but also um, using the exam boards. So the exam boards websites, so AQA, Edexcel, etc., um, are uh, very great places to look for both path papers and then the mark schemes that go along with them, but also the examiner reports or what some uh, or also the insights into the exam okay if the exam report is not available obviously the exams weren't done uh, last year so 2020 exam series didn't uh, take place in the normal time in the summer um so you you're looking at 2019 or even 2018 some exam boards haven't released 2019 um resources yet um so that teachers can have them as secure resources um 
So with that in mind, let's have a look at what I mean by using one of the exam reports. We're going to have a look at the science, the science exam report. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so for example, if we take the higher paper, um, and this is on biology, chemistry, sorry, paper one, the higher paper, um, then it gives you an idea of where students did best. So on these practical questions with mathematical skills but also where students did least well um, and this is a bit that you probably want to focus on and think right if the students did least well on these bits and you may need to make sure that I know these bits really well in order to succeed so let's take this basic knowledge and understanding in familiar and unfamiliar situations including the laboratory are tested throughout this paper it says that students read and analyze information provided in the question then read and understand the question especially the key command where before writing response i.e that's trying to tell you that lots of um, students didn't understand the wording of the question especially the key command word like analyze or explain or uh, even draw um, so knowing those key command words um, and making them part of your revision um, it goes on to explain other things um, about how uh, students didn't use correct terms like electronic structure formula molten liquid so again you need to think right i need to know exactly what they mean and how do i use them yeah so um i'll put these uh, a, a link to these uh up as well um however um these are available for uh, all your subjects not just english math and science um but they're obviously the ones that are generic uh, across every student so um Okay, that's how you can use them. And teachers use these at the beginning of um, every year or the end of every year when they're released um, in order to inform their planning. Um, so this is a great resource in order to inform you and what you need to um, make sure you're focusing on as well. So thinking about the teacher, thinking, right, what do I need to make sure I improve on based on previous years in order to help me achieve those highest grades? And then uh, it's thinking about reflection finally so um knowing when how to work with other students so sometimes they're a great resource um, and other times you might uh, get distracted by them so really thinking about who you're working with um and when you're working with them um rather than just like carte blanche like saying like i'm going to work with my like a friend all the time revising your plan so uh, as we said at the beginning, your revision uh, timetable has got to be something that's fluid throughout the year and you revise it based on how well you've, uh, you've done on achieving your certain goals that you've set for yourself. Um, or for example, after your mocks, what you therefore now think you need to really focus on. Okay? As you're going through the year, both in your revision and in your lessons, thinking about distilling what, which bits of information are the most important, which bits can I carry forward into a new topic. So if I take my subject, for example, of Spanish, and let's take a really simple item, okay, we're learning about place in town. Um, and so we learn all about how to say the castle, the cinema, et cetera. Um, and again, that's a very basic term in terms of vocabulary, but why is it, why is it important? Because again, you carry it forward into, into other topics. So for example, it's in arranging to go out, where, where are we gonna meet? It's in free time, what do I do in my free time? Where do I go? Um, so the same vocabulary uh, links across lots of different topics. Um, so the same in all of your other subjects, which bits of information of what you're learning um, can you link already to previous knowledge that you've already done or can you think, right, that's going to be useful for this uh, topic that I know I've got to, uh, to do. And then looking back to your goals, thinking, right, these were my goals that I originally set myself. Um, how far towards achieving them am I? Do I need to revise them? Do I need to put any more short term steps um, in my plan? Um, what am I going to do um, in order to make sure I achieve those goals? And then going back around um, that same loop um, over again um, and being really resilient in it. So it's not something that is going to come overnight or in a week or a month. Um, it's something that needs to happen throughout the year. So it's a great time to start thinking about it now um, before mocks um, and after mocks. Um, but and definitely something that's very useful to think about um, way before your exams come around. So um, keep going. Um, I'm sure that lots of lots of you have already made great gains this year um, and think, right, we're going to turn this 
of where you might feel now and to this because I've achieved that top and I've achieved the success that I want this year. Uh, thanks for listening and I will share uh, the links as well. I will uh, make sure they're in the post uh, where this video is found.